What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Business and Biceps. And you better wake your ass up, because on today's show, you might be listening right now and have problems committing and following through. I did a poll on Twitter, and like 70% of the people said that was their problem. So I figured I'd ask John Fosco for some help. So well, he can help you guys well, tell you how you follow through with your commitments and become more successful. Well, I'm <laughs> uh, li li listen, commitment and follow through. Are, are, are we talking about business yes. or personal? Because we're talking I about personal, I'm, I'm a failure. Um, <laughs> if uh, I'm an absolute fucking it's whack. business and biceps, Johnny. You want okay, to go business. there? Okay, <laughs> business. I'm good with that. I can, I can, I can shed some fucking light on commitment and follow through for sure, Corey Gregory. Yeah, I love it. I'm actually really looking forward to this topic because I think it's extremely relevant. And a lot of these times we uncover things during these talks. Yeah, we're like we, archaeologists. We uncover things. I wanted to be an archaeologist when I was a kid, John. I bet no you lie. did. I bet you fucking liked uh, Harrison Ford and you I went to see all the Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones movies and you fucking dressed like Harrison Ford. And then you realized hey. like, Dude, I'm in Ohio. <laughs> I am fucking not in Djibouti in Africa. Listen, you know, Rachel was. I used to tell. I told Rachel I want to be an archaeologist. She was like, I really can't see you like living in a tent somewhere, like brushing off bones in the middle of the fucking desert. A lot but, of attention to detail required. Yeah, that would that that is not my strong point. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> All right, hey, it's brought to you by Square. You know what their strong point is, John? What is, is it, Corey? What invoicing. Is it? They have a whole invoicing thing that people don't even know about. So I want to tell you about it at Square.com. Oh forward slash go forward slash biceps, you know, send your invoices in no time flat. There's a nap. There's now an app to make it fast, portable for people who are just, just use invoices in their business. You can create custom invoices. You can look like a pro John Fosco. You could accept payments. You can ah. secure online. All of it, John at square invoicing, but square.com forward slash go forward slash biceps. Pretty big. They're so big time, bro. Yeah. They're, they're so big, big time. time. They're a neat company, Corey. You're a neat guy, John. Well, that's a fact. That's a <laughs> hey, fact. So we, we've been uh, starting our episodes just talking about, you know, kind of warming up, talking about things that are going on. What do you want to talk about today, John? Um, if you, that's a dangerous question. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't really want to ask me what I want to talk about because so much of my day is what I have to talk about. Yeah. Um, when I go to what I want to talk about, you know, we start getting it. <laughs> we start going down dark corridors. The dark arts. What's interesting is I saw a guy and this, I've seen this comment mo multiple times, yes. but they see a clip of you saying something um, mm. that's direct and yeah. they always answer, John Fosco says what I'm thinking. Oh, and, yes. Yes. I mean, I think that's like a pretty accurate statement that well, dude, I've thought yeah. I mean, about so many times <laughs> by being around you. Listen, like, <laughs> there's a price that there's a price that has to be paid when, when you, when you just fucking say fuck it and you remove yeah. the filter and people get offended and they yeah. feel that you are mean to handicap people. They feel you're mean <laughs> to women. They feel you're mean to anything but yourself. And sometimes that might be true, but I don't mean to be mean. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I, 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 I like to think that uh, my heart's in the right place. But listen, if you, if you ask me a question, Corey, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a fucking answer. Oh, I know. So, I want to talk about, isn't yeah. there, um, uh, somebody down South that said like, you can't be around women. Oh, oh, of, what, 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 was that? Whole what was fucking, that whole thing? This whole fucking, it's actually the backwards of a pervert, but maybe it's a pervert in hiding. Ooh. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so here, our vice president doesn't feel it's appropriate to be in the presence of another female unless his wife is around. Okay. Listen, I am a, I'm a believer. I'm a spiritual guy. Jesus is my friend. But um, I don't think that Jesus wants to pre prevent me from interacting with uh, 50 Two percent of the human population. Yeah. So um, I, I think it's crazy, and I, I think yeah, I think this came up because there's like a Mississippi governor or senator or somebody who refuses to do an interview with a woman reporter because uh, she did not have a male companion, and therefore because he's married and 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 Christian and all this stuff, um, he views that as absurdly wrong. And I think 
Really? You know, yeah, I, you know, I hear straight. Is up. that a little ego though? You're thinking like, I'm so ego? fucking awesome. Not from, from this guy. He's like, I don't want to be around her because she probably wants to bang me. So no. I just fucking can't be no. around. Is it no, these that? guys, these guys are so worried. I believe there's my take about yeah. electability. And if they come from an extremely red state, that's very gotcha. Bible thumping. These kind of policies, these kind of personal policies are what the fundamentalist evangelical church loves. They love stuff like this. So I wow. don't even know if it's coming from a place of um, truth or, hey, I want to keep my base happy. So when I get up for reelection, they remember that I'm the guy that won't be around a girl. But what, what they don't understand is they're in such a fucking bubble that when they oh. actually if they actually step out of the bubble, it's the most obscene uh, like practice to so practice. Weird. Uh, in the world, I mean, how the fuck are, are you going to tell me if I'm married or whatever that I can't be around another woman unless my wife's around? Like, like basically bro. impossible. Yeah, and it's also saying you don't have any discipline. Listen, if you don't want to yes. get like have sex or do any of that, first off, a fucking interview or or, or just inter an interaction with a woman because she has a vagina and you and you have an erection or or, or a penis or something, um, it doesn't mean that something's going to go down, it, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, it means nothing's going to go down. It's two people. But to just to just go right to that, it almost makes yeah. me think that you, you know, are a Don't fucking cl closet pervert. Yeah, L literally. I, that's, that's the way I read it. I read it that two different ways. You can't discipline yourself to not try to have relations and, and basically get yourself in trouble when you can't hold yourself back. So you're actually policing yourself essentially because policing you're in the fruit bat. Yeah. You're policing the fruit bat or right. because you're thinking I'm so irresistible. If she's even in my presence and my wife's not there and she tries hey, to, if Mike Pence me, is thinking that I'll fucking, you should have a comedy special on Netflix. <laughs> I, it might be true, John. These motherfuckers got some big egos, bro. I don't Ugh. know. Jesus, that'd be I, hilarious though if that was true i mean I, all, all i know is listen um there's a lot of things that uh people should have a conscience about and interacting with the opposite sex in an appropriate way is probably not one that you really need to put focus on like here i understand if you're a married guy and you're not trying to put yourself uh in a strip joint six days a week and like keep yourself out of situations that could go wrong but like just just like interacting at the grocery store with another female and your wife's not there, shit ain't about to happen. Like, come on, get your shit together out here. Like, this is unbelievable to me. Unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, speak, hey, hey, and on the grocery store tip, speak for yeah. yourself. Oh, John's grabbing grapefruits out here. <laughs> speak for yourself right. on that one, son. Pirate's All booty. Right, so Pirate's booty. Pirate's booty. All right, so uh, like I said, I ran a pool on Twitter. A pool, a, po a pool, or a poll, pool. Corey. Uh, poll. Okay. I can't. It's my. It's my. It's my Ohio Valley uh, slang. I can't. Slang talk. dog. Dear. Yeah. Yeah. Dear. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I said, "Hey, what are what do you have problems with? Is it, you know, committing to something premature following, ejaculation, following through with something?" Or both, and you just dodge the fuck everything because you ain't you ain't trying to like put yourself out there. And it was really the heavy amount was the last two, with the with the biggest being the middle one, which was just following through. I think there's a lot of people that get, and here's kind of why I asked it: people get real fucking excited. I'm committing to this. I'm doing that. I'm gonna buy this. I'm gonna get my sales to here. I'm gonna start this business. I'm gonna lose this weight. I'm gonna fuck it. Blah 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 blah. Shout it out to everybody on Facebook. All my cousins know. And then it's fucking crickets 30 days from then. And then it's crickets 60 days from then. Like, don't be that fucking person. But once again, that's what's happening out here. So I would like this. I like to think that maybe we could have some tips, John, yeah. on how we have continued to follow through on projects and initiatives um, over the years and maybe also the flip side of when we backed off some certain things because we just knew it wasn't working. But I would love to hear some of your tips on how you've followed through all these years and, and, and 
achieve this type of success? Yeah, the first thing I would say is kind of, at least in my mind, to give, the, to give it more context, um, mm -hmm. the perfect example that popped in my head when you were talking was New Year's Eve and everyone's <laughs> commitment to fitness, right? Yes. And and there's all Brutal. these fucking fat slobs everywhere that talk about, oh, I'm going to fucking eat better. I'm going to get on the treadmill. They get their membership. They did it. Motherfucker, it's July 20. I'm sorry. It's, Ju it's, it's January 21st. And you've been to the gym twice. And you say you're too busy, which is the same thing you were saying from the previous uh, January 15th all the way through December 31st. And then you do that every year, every year, every year. And this, the, this is the greatest example I think that everyone can relate to of people like talking about something they're going to commit to and not following through. I think, I think the, big, the big challenge when it comes to committing to something is typically people always talk about committing to something that they've never done. And when you commit to something you've never done, there is always this, this human feeling, this natural feeling of uncomfort. Like I feel out of place. We are creatures of habit. So when we do something that's different and we feel out of place, we, we like we internally panic because we feel just like a fish out of water. But what people don't understand is that out of placeness, if you just commit to feeling out of place, you start feeling in place. And now you're in place doing something that you've always wanted to do, but you had to get through that first week or two weeks or three weeks to adjust. You don't just jump into doing something and it feels right. Everything you do that's new feels fucking weird, man. It feels fucking weird until it's a habit. That's just how it yeah. is. So I think what happens is people feel that weirdness. They feel that offness. They feel out of what whatever they do on a daily basis, and, and it just feels wrong. Well, actually, that's, that's the uncomfort we always refer to when we're talking about is when, when we talk about that's where the growth is at. That right there. So it, for the people who want to figure out how to make that change that they keep yapping about, when that uncomfort comes on after that first day at the gym, the second day at the gym, or you know uh, the first or second day of trying to develop uh, a new business idea or execute on it, you need to keep going. That uncomfort will start becoming comfortable. And then once you get comfortable in a place where you used to be uncomfortable, fuck, you feel like alive. You're like, this is exciting. I'm in a new place. And guess what just, ha guess what just happened? You just grew as a person by putting yourself out there. And what, what I love about that process, John, is once you fight through that uncomfort and then it's like it, it becomes added to your skill set. Like all of a sudden, here, great example, CBD Social is a direct to customer brand retail shop, right? Yes. I never, I never did that before. You never did that before. Uh, and it's like, but then it's I, like. I, I did, yeah, somebody, I did it once before. Yeah. You, did, you created it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause did MMA yeah. stop have its own, own, per, it had its own apparel and stuff too? Get like gear at a, from a retail front. That, that's what I'm saying. But did it have its own brand? Yeah. I, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. So, so you created MMA stop had its own Correct. gear and was sold in the store. Okay. I wasn't, right. I thought it was only third party. So that's yeah. my bad. So basically, all right, then especially me and never even experienced that before. Um, and there's a lot of uncomfortable feelings that aren't internet based because everything I've done for a long time has been internet based. And when it was, retail based. It wasn't our store. I didn't own it. It was someone else owned it. Right. And there's a whole different set of rules and a whole different set of things. And it's like you experience those things. And then once it's added into your skill set, it, it just widens your, you know, knowledge, your, your path of business, your, in, in, in opportunities for the future. And it's like, every time you do that and you go through and you, you work through that type of stuff, it's like, man, it just, it's so much easier to be able to say, you know what, that I remember how uncomfortable this was or that was. And I've had a lot of these things over my career. And then once they become somewhat normal, you're like, man, you just get more confidence to go get the next thing and understand sure. the next thing. And it's like, I had the ultimate confidence, especially with you as my business partner, that this thing would be figured out because that's what we do. And that there's going to be things and you know, over time, that's still going to be really new and still exciting. And 
still very different and, and problems to solve, but I look forward to it because at the end of the day, once you solve them, you win. But that, that going through that uncomfort, it just stops so many people in their tracks. They're just so fucking scared. Right. I'm scared the opposite way. I'm scared to get a rep of a guy that never does what he says he's going to do. I have a reputation of a person that does what he says he's going to do. But at the end of the day, it's because I didn't want to be known as the other person, which was maybe how I viewed some other people in my life. And I think that's, that's important. I never wanted to get that rep, dude. Yeah, man. I, I think this, this comes back to um, a, a big point, and that's like I really respect people who don't talk about shit. Yes. They do shit. And, yes. and even when they do shit, mm -hmm. they don't talk about it. Right. So it's like so many people are going to tell you about what they're going to do. But look at the people who do shit. They're not busy talking about it because they're busy doing it. So if you find yourself not executing and not following through, but you find yourself telling everybody about what you're going to do, that's, that's part of the problem because that time and that energy and those thoughts that's that's all fucking bullshit. Like 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 it's all it's all bullshit. Listen, if you want to be one of those people who, who's going to get in shape, you know, for your New Year's resolution, go do it. Do it. Go like 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 I don't need to hear about it, but but I will like say, whoa, you look good. You've lost twenty pounds, and it's like, yeah, you know. But but it's like you don't need to tell anybody. It's like, oh, I'm going to do another business. Like I uh, I don't I don't need I don't want to talk about it. Like like I I want to do it because. Like part of talking about it is, you know, uh, reputation matters um, and it determines for a lot of people whether they want to uh, deal with you or be around you or listen to you. And um, if you're one of those people who talks before something's done, even if you are doing it, like nobody nobody wants to hear someone and then say oh show it to me and they say oh well it's uh, 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 then you're a fucking bullshitter so keep mm -hmm. your mouth shut use that time for action and just understand that like back to what i said first that if you do successfully once go through a process that is a true change and you're truly uncomfortable then the next time you challenge yourself you are going to be in familiar territory you're going to be like, oh, this was like when I tried to uh, lose that weight and I was so uncomfortable going to the gym. I thought people were looking at me. I thought people were like, why is that person here? And, uh, but no, this, fe this feels like that. And then you're like, you're like, oh, this is part of the process. But you don't know it's part of the process until you stick it through. So, so many people are noncommittal and their talkers are talking because they've never stuck anything through. And what that equals equals a mundane life, bro. It equals a fucking yeah. mundane life of I wish I would uh of regrets and and people need to be at peace with the fact that if you go out and you do something that you really wanted to fucking do and you do it, that's a win. Even if you yeah. don't win even if you don't win at it. That's yeah. a win. You know what I'm saying? Because you 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 at least put yourself out there and there's so many lessons in that. So a lot of people, I love your, the, uh, not talking, just actions. And he, here's one of the best, I would say reactions that I enjoy getting, um, from people that I'm not even trying to get. It just happens, right? Because I operate like you just said, when you constantly pump your chest and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And especially a lot of people don't go through with it. Then you're setting sh yourself up really for like disappointment and, and it, it just, it's, it's a little bit of a bad stance when I do something or we do something and it's happens, like the actions have already been put in, the ideas are in play. It's already producing money. I've really never said much about it. And then as it's happening, like for instance, uh, somebody says, Hey, I didn't see you at, uh, whatchamacallit gathering, you know, with your wife, what was you, where was you at? And, uh, you know, just friendly, I'm like, oh yeah, I was down in, uh, you know, South Carolina doing this or this. Oh shit. Uh, I didn't even know you was doing that. And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's been open for this. Uh, oh, well fuck. Like it's already like happening. It, dude, to me, that's like the best because I never said, Hey, I'm about to do this. 
we just did it. You found out about it organically, just in conversation. I can see it on your face that you're like, fuck, that sounds awesome. Can't believe it's not just an idea you spit at me that it's already in place. Same thing with Max, same thing with the website, the podcast, whatever it is. When I see those reactions that I don't even really need to see, but happen organically about actions that are taking, things that have been followed through on that are actually in practice, that's a much better feeling that's organically you know, back at you with an interaction personally than ever going, I'm going to own this or buy that or do this business. And then when it doesn't work out, you're like, oh, actually, uh, it's just, I think it's a bad practice. And, and I, I know that people want to set goals and aspire and maybe you write that on your phone or maybe tell your best friend or whatever. But when you're popping yourself off all over social media about, you know, Gary Vee runs around with this a lot of time. He says he wants to buy the Jets, which he probably will because he's a super motivated guy. He has all these people all the time. I'm going to buy the Rams. Well, I'm going to buy the Dolphins. No, you're not. No, you're probably not. Going, You can't just like see someone else and just say, fuck it, I'm going to do that. Like just blindly say dumb shit yeah. that you really don't have no attachment to just as you want to make hear yourself talk or be loud. Dude, that's just a fucking, you're just, you're just going to not fucking go through with it. And I just think that that right now happens a lot. And I would rather be the guy that actually has action, puts stuff in place, makes it happen, whether you care about it or not, meaning the other person I'm talking to, I don't really care, but it's like, I'd rather have that reaction per se, John, because that, that feels a little bit more real to me. And there's a respect that comes with it usually um, from that other individual. Like I said, I'm not asking for it, but it just yeah. happens. Yeah, I, that makes I, sense. I, for sure. And But, but I, I guess if I take it back to the driver of the action to commit to something or to change or to make a change in your lifestyle. I think you're, you're failing at square one if you're doing it. So someone else notices like, yeah, of course. like to make a change and to commit to something. If it is not wholly about what's inside of you, you it, it's over. Like, 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 like it's not going to work because making a change and committing to something and executing, it's, it, it's not a one-time thing. It's a daily process day in and day out and it never stops. So if it's not living inside of you, well then it, it's not going to fucking work. So if you're doing it because you think you're going to look cool to a group of people or you want to get your ex-girlfriend back. Those are those are false motivations, and and that's part of the reason why you cannot stick it through. The only that thing might be the can, best thing that's been said yet, Johnny. It, yeah. It's the fucking truth. Because well, if and, it's about impressing someone else, you're fucked. Yeah, and if you if, you know, and, and you're only going to stick through things that you are truly uh, semi obsessed with, passionate about, mm -hmm. and or love, because we talk. We talk about it all the time. You can be passionate as fuck about something, but there's going to be days that you hate. There's going to be days that are hard. Just because you're passionate about what you're doing doesn't mean every day is fucking rainbows and sun sunshine. That's just not how it works because fucking shit's hard, especially if you take a fucking risk and you, you know, you try to create something. It's fucking hard. So, so if you're not in love with it and you're doing it for someone else, you will quit. You will throw in the towel. Your corner will uh, metaphorically throw in the fucking towel and there's, there's no way you'll, you'll, you'll survive. So when you're trying to um, make a commitment to something, you know, you really got to ask yourself, is this, is this coming from me or is this because I want to impress someone? Well, and you know, what's so crazy, John, and I think that has a lot to do with the weight loss problem at the first of the year. People, yeah. and I've helped so many people lose weight over the years. That was always kind of my specialty. And it's like, it only happens when they really are fed up. They're really fed up that every time they tie their shoes, their fucking blood pressure's through their neck. They're really fed up that they can't walk up the stairs. They're really fed up that they can't play with their kids. They're really fed up uh, just with the feeling shitty. All like It never comes because, hey, your mom said, hey, you need to lose 20 or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. or like it, If it's outside like that, that's why they fall off. The people that actually take change in their life is because they're finally at the point where enough is enough. And, and, and really, I think that I, I was similar in, from a business standpoint. I hit the point as a kid that I said to myself, 
I can't fucking stand this way of life anymore. I'm not willing to watch this fucking movie play out again. I am not going to keep myself at this standard. I am not going to allow my family to live like this anymore. I'm fucking done with it. I really think that inside I was so fucking fed up with the, the way shit was going that I fucking told myself deep down all the way as deep as you can get that I had to fucking change it no matter what it took. And, and I literally think, and, and I started to, to create this narrative in my brain, like I could feel how fucking intense it was. And I was like, I get a chance. I get to be the person that can change it and that can teach and that can change a lot about what's happened previous in my family. And, and it's, I can't stop that. That isn't someone else to impress someone else. That was, that's like the deepest thing that I get up every day. It doesn't go fucking away. It right. doesn't go away. And if you don't have that obsession to that level, see, that's, that's where I think people are falling short. They're not, they might be doing something or trying to commit to something that's really for someone else. It's really not what they want to be about, which is what you mentioned. And that's why they're never getting there because they think what they're about isn't good enough or won't work. And that's, that, that's a lot of these problems out here, man. It's, yeah, they, it's, they fear it's the tricky. judgment. Yeah. They, they, they fear the judgment that, that people think what they do is stupid or not good enough or whatever. But at the end of the day, you are you and you know what you want to do. But like what, what you were saying about yourself, everybody has the ability to make that decision. Like, okay, this, this is it. I'm like, I'm, it. Ma I'm making a change because this is no more. And yeah, everybody... no matter fucking what, John, no matter fucking yeah. what, see, that's but, where people fuck it up. But, Sorry. but everybody has that power. Everybody yes. has that fucking power, but people, people, it's so interesting to me to watch how people give their own power away. They give it to people mm -hmm. who try to manipulate them. They give it to people who try to control them. They give it to people who are abusive to them. It's like, we are so powerful if we harness our own energy and we basically draw boundaries and respectfully people are going to, we are going to make sure that those boundaries are respected because it's our life. At the end of the day, we all have mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, significant, other, all this. So we all have that. But this is our life and our yeah. life must be dictated by us if we want it to be happy, number one, and if we want to sustain what we're doing. It cannot be dictated by another person. Once again, I think that there's a very similar equation with every person that does what they want to do with their life, has had some success, is happy, and is extremely motivated. It's there's like an equation that lines up and a lot of it starts with that fed up mentality set up with a set of goals or uh, passions that they, they get into and then only really know how to follow through. Like every person I know that's a peer, John, to us, mm -hmm. this is just the way they live, yeah. right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not uncommon. Like, once again, I, I've got kind of a rep of just... Uh, you know, you get these people to say, oh, everything you do goes to gold or works out or, mm -hmm. you know, is, but it's not that it's because oh. the projects I am obsessed about this whole vertical, you know, area that I'm in, which is content and products and branding and all like, I love it. I fucking love it. And we spend unlimited hours doing it. And it's because their equation isn't matching up. My equation as, as progressed over time, but it matched up young. Like I knew what I wanted to do and why, and then going through the uncomfortable part to commit to things, to put myself out there, to actually get them through. Now, look, a lot of times committing and following through, I followed through, but I never got the result I wanted. I might not have got the hundred. I, I didn't get the A plus result I, I dreamed about. Maybe I got the fucking C result, but guess what? Fuck it. Next, it's the next thing because I built a little bit of confidence. I learn and I go on. Though this process happens, how many fucking times, John? How many yeah. times does this well, process it, it, happen that you started business? Well, it's it's, it, it's it's like this. That that's why I compare it to a game because nobody's surprised when they know somebody is a good baseball player, a good basketball player. 
they're not surprised when it's game time and they and they score twenty. They're not surprised mm-hmm. because they know that's a good basketball player. So uh, I've 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 always believed that because everybody puts themselves in the pool of oh mm-hmm. I, I can own my own business I can own my own store oh I want to start a clothing company I want to start a skincare they don't understand that just like the guy who's uh you know an all american he's going to beat you on the court every time because he's an all american yeah it's the same in business there there's nothing there's nothing when you get to a certain level of of repetition in business when you do something uh a lot of times there's nothing that that's luck based like the this this is an equation yeah and 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 and, it, and it's time involved and it's like, you know, the the guy who scores 20, he's probably spent 10,000 hours fucking doing layups, p- playing, you know, as a child. It's the same thing. And people can't identify that. So if you're trying to learn and you really want to be um, a businessman or a businesswoman, you have to understand. And, and, and it's just the easiest parallel I always know how to make that, like, think about great athletes like they are the ones that put in the time so you're never surprised when james harden drops 30 because you know that guy is fucking an amazing basketball player business is the same thing um but but, but it's not respected the same way because people are surprised when john fosco makes another well million. because money is connected right well yeah money's connected to emotion money's connected yeah. to Oh, he thinks he's better than me. See, see, and, yes. and this is where people I fucking need to, hate that shit, man. But, it's but, disrespectful. <laughs> it, it, it is, but it's never going to change. You know, no, I know. I, and you, you know, we I th- we brought this statement up on the podcast before, but you know, your successes highlight other people's failures. I, I, um, uh, I've been dealing with that my whole life, and uh, it sucks because it makes a lot of people uh, dislike you, and you've literally like never talked to them. Um, uh, just because you have something they don't, and it's easier for them to refer to you as lucky or something like that. And, um, I think, you know, I I think putting any stock into how people react to you when, when you're not like dealing with them, I think that's for fools. I think, I, I really think it's for fools because I could care less if someone who I don't know, or I'm not talking to feels a certain way like that affects me zero like someone wants to say bad stuff about me like i'm i'm the idiot if i let that affect my day because my my day is important you know what i'm saying yeah if you give that any power it's it's interesting because uh, i want to touch on that the business and kind of everybody in the same pool if people looked at it like more like athletics there would be a different respect to it instead because you don't see the skill actually happening per se, it's not looked upon. Like when uh, Joe Smo is talking to John, he doesn't know because he can't see John shoot a jump shot on TV. He doesn't really know how good your skill is, right? He just automatically thinks, I size up John. He wears black jeans, got a backwards hat. I see the way he doesn't, he doesn't look like a business guy. He, he, uh, There's I no way this think, guy can make more money than me. Look exact, at him. Look at him. Look exact, at him. Look at him. He's got tattoos. Exactly. Look at him. And it's like okay, drives dude. me crazy, bro. Yeah, but but it, it, it you know it, it's it's what it I kinda is. I kind of like it though too. I kind of like it a little bit because I get that shit constantly, bro. Like I don't, Listen. you know, people think I'm just like a dumb fucking weightlifter, bro. I fucking love that shit. And I try to tell a lot of these weightlifters that fucking hate on me, like, yo, I have a different skill than you got. Look, you might be a better lifter than me. Cool. I get, I'm getting everything out of my body. I can a hundred percent. Like I fucking, no, you don't even need to myself. answer them. You, you know, you don't exactly. even, and I, and I don't, I, I think them. I do. What I like about it is I do with my actions. Cause I'm not going to engage with people on that because at the end of the day, I just keep doing what I do and that's, that's it. it. You see what happens. And that's, that's what everybody that's needs to do. Everybody that's, needs to stop worrying about what somebody else would think, uh, or someone else does think. And and get out of that cycle of of, mm-hmm. of drama. Get the fuck out of it, and just be about yourself. And then on the flip side of that, because that may sound selfish, just just respect people, show people respect, yep. but understand 
that the more success you have, any anybody will tell you this. Oh. The more success you have, the more people dislike you. And and guys, that is the world we live in. And um, you know, some people like it because they know that if that's coming their way, they're doing something right. So, you know, this is a yes. thing, this is a thing that I, I just think the main message isn't really about uh success. It's about when you're doing anything in this in this realm, fuck everybody else. It's your journey. It's yours. Yeah. So 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 please like live it. All right, John, I want to wrap it up with um, you know, we talked about committing, following through. Give me like two uh quick uh you know, quick hitters on a couple items to do if people are, uh, you know, just ha like they're in something they like and they just can't get it all the way through for some reason. So let's say their passion, they're in at least the spot, but they don't feel like they can get it over the top. They're not following through or something's holding them yeah. back. Is there like a tip that you can just say, I, hey, I, I would, yeah, here. I would say, listen, nobody, nobody has all the answers. So typically yeah. if someone's making a change or trying to commit to something, oh, I want to start a business. So, so they feel like they need to be the guy or the gal that has all the answers. No one has all the answers. So when you are at a sticking point and you can understand that people can help you. And even if you, oh, I, I want to be an owner. I want to be a CEO. Listen, the smartest motherfuckers in the world go get the other smartest fucking people and they surround themselves <laughs> with smart people because that is how you grow something. So when you get that feeling like, oh, this is my idea. This is my thought. So even though it's not working, I'm going to keep spending time to make it work. You're fucking stupid, dude. It's not working because it doesn't work. So bring someone in who can objectively look at it and say, what about this? New ideas breed change. And when you're at a sticking point, you need change. Yeah, that's amazing. I think uh, for me, and we talked about this before too, is, you know, I think you got to have an awful lot of self-talk going on. I think you need those other eyeballs. I think you need uh, in, in an internal, like, an internal dialogue to the point that sounds obsessively crazy. I, I really think to push things through the next level, you have to be viewed probably if people heard what you said to yourself, like probably kind of a maniac. I mean, I just think that's really what it takes. I think that people have a hard time identifying with something being that significant and that aggressive and that obsessive and that, but that is literally what it takes inside to push things to the next level to try to achieve what you want. And I think if you do not take part in whether it's calling yourself a bitch or doing this or relying on things from your past that should wake up some motivation on yourself, like, you know, th there's a lot of these things that have been in place to help me make it through commitments that I've put myself out there on and that's only progressed my career. And it takes all of those things. It takes the daily habits. It takes the daily self-talk. It takes me remembering how things used to be. It takes, it takes gratitude. It takes whatever it is, whether it's, the, and John loves art and music. He, he has to have a dose of that every day. There's all these things. They all come together to make sure that we can fucking bust our ass and push through the things that are really difficult. And it takes all of that. So just make sure you put all those things in order in your own way and be mindful of them. And I think that's what's helped me get through um, a lot of these finish lines per se over time. There's the finish line continues to get further away, but you know what I mean? The many wins, they all come from those type of things. And, and I continue them every day. There you go, buddy. All right. Hey, Johnny, it's brought to you by great, great talk, by the way, brought to you by square square.com forward slash go forward slash biceps. They have an amazing invoicing system. You could send John Fosco an invoice in no time flat. There's now an app to make it fast and portable for people who just use invoices in their business. You can create custom invoices and look like a pro, John. You could look like a pro. Go to square.com forward slash go forward slash biceps. And you are a pro, John. So it's easy to look like one. Listen, the bottom line is this. If, if you have a business, get Square involved in it. They have way too many solutions that all link up and they make, they literally make doing the hard shit in business easy. Like, get them involved. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Johnny Fosco! G! <laughs> 
Can the podcast be stopped? The podcast, the podcast can, can be stopped. stopped.